So, you want to build muscle, but you don't know where to start. Well, yes you do. Start right here. We are going to today lay out the optimal path so you waste as little of your time and effort as possible. So step into my office here, and let me show you how it's done. What's up everybody, Darren Starr here. Thank you for joining me inside the Honda CRV of games because we only travel in the utmost of style here. So today we're gonna to talk about building muscle. I wanna go over the process of the whole thing and how it works, lay out what you worry about, what you don't, so you can spend your time and energy focusing on the things that matter the most. So let's go. First point that I would make is that building muscle is hard and your body, quite frankly, would rather not. It has better things that it would like to do with its time and energy than build more lean tissue. So in order to grow, you have to probably work a little bit harder, be a little bit more consistent, persistent, and relentless than you probably think. You have to work harder in the gym. You have to be more consistent with your diet. You probably also have to be more patient than you probably think is going to be required. Just remember at all times that you are doing something that is in some definition of the word unnatural for your body. And so you've got to give it a reason to comply. So always be thinking about the variables that we're going to talk about here. You have to work really hard. Your nutrition has to be on point. You have to be resting well, recovered well, manage your stress well, all of those things. You need to create a good working environment for your body to really be willing to cooperate muscle. You could have, you could be training really hard. You could be feeding yourself well, but if you're working too hard, if you're training too much, if you're not prioritizing recovery, if you're stressed out of your mind, etc., all those things are gonna play against you and they're gonna hamper your total progress. Second point, without getting into specific nuts and bolts of every exercise, you've gotta understand when you're performing a movement what the purpose of that movement is. And it's not just like, oh, this is a bicep exercise, but think about all of your muscles as having a long or lengthened position and also a shorter or fully contracted position. And think about if you're working the muscle through a range of motion, the let's experience both that long position and that short position on each rep. There could be some reasons why you might wanna do partial range of motion, but if you're just starting out, pretend that partial range of motion is not even a thing. You want full range of motion on all your exercises and make sure you have a good connection with them as well. If you're performing RDLs, for example, uh, but you don't feel it working in your hamstrings and you feel like your grip is the thing that's gonna give out first, you gotta troubleshoot that. So you should have a good, thorough understanding of what every exercise is trying to accomplish. I do have an online course called Hypertrophy University, which I'll link in the description down below that really goes into incredibly deep granular detail, not on specific exercises, but on all the overall concepts that you want to carry into the gym with you. It's a really good primer if training is relatively new to you, or even if you're a little bit more towards intermediate or advanced, just to make sure that you're pushing and pulling all the buttons and levers that need to be pushed and pulled. So you've got to work hard and be consistent. You've got to understand how to train properly. Third is you've got to have your diet set up. And so very basically, we could have many other videos that go into exactly how you might structure a diet, but on a ballpark, I would say have your uh, protein intake set at about one gram per pound of body weight. And if you have significant weight to lose or gain, I might skew that more towards one gram per pound of goal body weight. Um, or you can kind of split the difference between those two potentially. Um, have your carbs set up, I would say at somewhere between one to two grams per pound of body weight and have your fat set up at maybe around like 0.5 grams per pound of body weight. So if you're 140 pound woman, then your uh, protein intake should be at 140, carbs at somewhere between 140 and 280, and fats at around 70. That's a great place to start. You'll want to refine that over time. If you're a 200 pound guy, again, 200 grams of protein, two to 400 grams of carbs, 100 grams of fat, great starting point if you're looking to build muscle. If you're looking to drop body fat, those are not the numbers that I would recommend. But as a starting point to build muscle, it's a great place to start working from. Fourth on the list, we're gonna bounce back into the gym now and cover the concept of progressive overload. This is the idea that you are training harder this week than you did last week, and that you will train harder next week than you did this week. Fundamentally, this comes down to two things. First of all, is consistency and continuity in your training. Hitting the same workouts week after week after week 
and changing things as little as possible. Uh, and also logging your workouts, tracking it either in an app, not my favorite, or on pen and paper, that's what I would recommend. Um, so that you have all the numbers in front of you and you can look at your performance from week to week and find out, hey, this is kind of where I need to push it a little bit this week. I think I can go for an extra five pounds here, et cetera. I think I can get an extra rep or two on this set possibly. Leave some note if, as you go through a workout and say, I feel like I had a little bit more gas in the tank here. Then you'll know for next week, that's where I want to push a little bit harder. Uh, continuity and training is big. So if you're doing an exercise on a machine, hit that same machine the next week. Not all machines are created equal. You cannot equivocate from free weight to machine. You can't say, well, I did a 225 pound bench press, so I'll do 225 pounds on this machine. Different exercise entirely. So continuity and training is big. If you follow the principle of progressive overload, that is not something that can continue indefinitely. Eventually, you're gonna hit a brick wall, things are gonna to start to plateau, and that's when you change up your training. Typically, that's gonna be on around a six to 10 or 12 week interval for most people. If you're really, really pushing aggressively, tracking these things closely, um, and, and pushing your body to its limits, and then trying to extend those limits and push past them a little bit, that's how we really get into the next level of where we wanna go with our physiques. Sorry, I had to slow down. There are some deer crossing the road here. They, they all made it safely, no accidents here. Number five, I want you to think about recovery and think about this as being really the secret sauce that no one talks about in terms of growth. Um, I think it's one of those things that this is something that everybody hears um, early on in their training um, career, but then they say, okay, yeah, but let me focus on the other stuff first. And that's a huge mistake. Uh, and the thing that people hear is that you put in the work in the gym, but you grow outside of the gym. That is absolutely true. So you need to put in really good, hard work, following progressive overload, understanding how these exercises and mechanics all work, and operate with a really high level of intensity in the gym, but then you get out of the gym and you rest and you recover. And so that doesn't mean like, okay, I've worked out, now I'm gonna be sedentary the rest of the day. It really means um, using an appropriate level of training volume, which is gonna be somewhere probably in the range of 10 to 14 good hard working sets per muscle group per week is pretty optimal. I see a lot of people who will do workouts where they, they hit like, I'm gonna do 30 or 35 sets for shoulders, and that's just too much. Like you can do that work, the problem is your body can't recover from it. And so you could get every bit as much uh, in the way of results from doing half that volume in half the amount of time. So do less. Do less, and also your quality of work will be higher in doing half the volume, so you'll probably get more out of doing less than you would from doing one of those stupid 30 or 35 set workouts. Just manage your volume at a reasonable level and keep your performance level high. Get out of the gym, no two-a-days. Sleep really well, prioritize it, aim for eight hours. Make sure that you're managing your stress well also. Elevated cortisol comes from having higher levels of stress. Cortisol is a catabolic hormone. Well, if we're trying to build muscle, we wanna be anabolic. Catabolic is the opposite of that. So we don't want any catabolic hormones at high levels in our system. So manage your stress, deal with the things that are stressing you out, and just learn to be a little bit more at peace, a little bit more namaste in your life on a day-to-day -day basis would help a ton. Sixth on my list is supplementation. Uh, and it's sixth on the list for a reason. We're, we're approaching the end of this video and we haven't talked about supplementation yet because it really makes almost no difference at all. One of the most common questions I get asked is, what about creatine? So creatine does have clinical evidence to support that it actually does help a little bit, um, but a little bit, not to the extent that anybody is going to really notice it. Some people will say, well, if you add in creatine, you can gain somewhere between three to five pounds of additional muscle over the course of a year. Um, I find a whole lot of flaws with that reasoning. I have not seen that evidence borne out in reality with myself, with any clients. I think the studies that track that stuff are flawed, so um, creatine is not something that I recommend. Now that being said, you can take it, it won't hurt you, but don't think that that is the secret sauce. What supplements would I recommend? You know, honestly, the only supplements that I would recommend are the kind that have calories that are gonna help you hit your macros. So protein shakes, you know, a powdered carb, if you need that in order to hit your carbohydrate target, 
that's about it. Beyond that, make sure you're not deficient in uh, micronutrients. So, you know, good variety in food, take a multivitamin, cover your bases. Omega-3 oils can be great. Beyond that, you really don't need much. You don't even need that necessarily. And none of these things are going to be the secret that unlocks additional muscle growth. Now, on that subject, if we were gonna talk about performance enhancing drugs, anabolic substances, steroids, etc., yeah, that stuff makes a big difference but not really talking about that here. And if you're watching this video and learning like, how do I build muscle? Do everything else that I've talked about before, for years, before you consider taking that approach. You wanna maximize what you can do for your body naturally first. Um, the payoff from doing so is significant. I just realized I'm looking kind of homeless here, so I'm gonna pop in and uh, get a haircut and see if I can like fix my life a little bit. See if I can actually like look presentable on camera for once. I'll be right back. Okay, that's better. I can deal with that. You know, the lady who cut my hair described my hair as a train wreck. Not sure how to take that necessarily. Okay, and finally, the last point that we want to consider here before beginning this process of building muscle is to make sure that you're ready for it. And by that, I mean if you have some significant body fat to lose, do that first. The last thing that you want to do is put yourself in a dedicated muscle building phase when you're not really lean enough to really see the benefits from that. Several reasons for this. First one being, if you're overweight and have weight to lose, your hormones are going to be a little bit skewed and not really in an optimal place to build muscle. Second is that building muscle is a really slow process. If you do everything correctly, it's still a slow process. And if you're not lean enough to see subtle differences in size and shape of muscle, as you are trying to build, it will feel like nothing is happening. And so if you drop some body fat first, get a little bit leaner, you can start to see some of those subtle changes that happen over longer periods of time. It can be a little reassuring like, okay, I'm doing the right stuff here. It's still gonna require a lot of patience, but you wanna make sure that you're lean enough to actually get the benefits of going into a muscle building stage. How lean is that? It'd be nice to have some kind of visible outline of your abs. They don't have to be super deeply etched or anything like that. But if you've got love handles, if you've got like, you know, just too much weight in the midsection, you know, um, really heavy fat storage deposits elsewhere, clean some of that up first, lean out first, um, and then, um, and then you can really get the benefits of a good and proper muscle growth phase. I would also say it's a great idea to get your labs run, see if there's any abnormalities in your blood work and work to address those as well. Some of those might be counterintuitive to enter into a growth phase with. Um, for example, if your glucose or A1C are both elevated or high, going into a phase where you are going to be eating more and taking in more calories and elevating that number higher still might not be a great idea. So there could be a couple of contraindications there. Always a great idea to check your lab work as well. So that being said, if, you, if all this makes sense and you want to dive in and get started, great. I, I've laid these out in kind of an order of operations for how I want you to think things. If you need more assistance, what you need is probably a coach. And that's me, that's what I do. I'm a full-time body transformation and contest prep coach. So you can also check out the link in the description to check out more about my coaching program that I have on my website. You can also read more about Hypertrophy University if that online course is more up your alley. And certainly comment below with any questions you have and I'll be watching those comments and happy to help out. So stay safe, train hard.